having thermostatically controlled heating when it comes to our reptiles is something that many of us consider a must have but the different types of thermostats can confuse the budding hobbyist so in this video we'll go over the importance of thermostatic control how they work and which one is best for what situation and that is coming up this channel is dedicated to improving reptile welfare with science and good information sources if you want to stay up to date with good science-based care for your reptiles then click the subscribe button and press the bell icon for future information Thermostats, in simple terms, safely regulate heating equipment and maintain your desired temperature by regulating energy sent to the heating equipment. Thermostats have a sensory probe, which we place in the vivarium. This reads temperatures and allows the thermostat to calculate whether it needs to increase energy to the heating equipment or reduce it until it reaches the desired temperature the user sets. Now there are three main types of thermostats, each work in different ways and are suitable for different heating equipment. Now we have on off thermostats. These are also often called mat stats as they are often used with heat mats, but they can also be used with heating cables. These work by turning on, supplying energy to the heat mat until it reaches the set temperature. Then it turns off. When the temperature drops below the desired temperature, the thermostat turns on again, repeating in an on-off fashion. Then we have our pulse thermostats. A pulse thermostat works differently to the on-off thermostat in the way that it regulates energy to the heating device. The pulse thermostat pulses energy in a very rapid fashion that provides a very accurate temperature. Instead of turning off and on again, the thermostat alters the frequency at which the pulses occur. If the temperature is too low, the frequency increases. If the temperature is too high, the frequency decreases. These are most frequently used on ceramic heat emitters, heat mats and heat cables. These are more accurate than on-off stats, but are also more expensive. However, where increased accuracy is preferable, like in an incubator for example, then a pulse thermostat is recommended. And then we have our dimming thermostats. The dimming thermostat, as the name suggests, dims energy provided to the heating equipment. If the temperature is above the desired temperature, the energy sent to the heating equipment is reduced. So the bulb will be allowed to run at full power, then is slightly dimmed when appropriate to maintain a steady temperature. I mentioned bulb because this is the type of thermostat most commonly used with light emitting bulbs like halogen basking lamps because it does not blow the bulb like the other thermostats might and it won't cause constant flashing. This type of thermostat could be used with any type of heating equipment apart from mercury vapour bulbs. These cannot be thermostatically controlled though due to economic factors most keepers reserve the dimming thermostat to the likes of deep heat projectors and halogens and use the less expensive thermostats for the other heating equipment. Each thermostat comes with a maximum water wattage that can be passed through it. Most on-off thermostats have a maximum wattage of 100 watts or more, so a 60 watt heat map poses no real issues. The pulse and dimming thermostat typically come in 600 watts. In any case, make sure that any heating equipment does not exceed the maximum wattage of the thermostat you choose to use. It is better to use a lower wattage bulb so that when controlled by a thermostat, it's only slightly dimmed. Remember that reptiles associate high light with good basking sites, so it is preferable to use a lower wattage bulb that will occasionally be dimmed than to use a bulb that is too high of a wattage, meaning it has to be dimmed right down, reducing the light output of the bulb. The heat output will remain as infrared heat energy is non-visible to human eye, but the visible light produced may be reduced significantly. But it's better to have the bulb run closer to maximum output for the maximum output of light. The probe placement can be different depending on who you ask and the user's preference. The most common method is to have the probe within or just outside the radiance of the heat source. This way the hot end is unlikely to exceed the set temperature. Now you can run multiple heat mats or bulbs off one thermostat. Again, as long as you don't go over the maximum wattage of the thermostat. I run both of my Bearded Dragon's basking bulbs from one dimming thermostat. Providing that the products are suitable for that type of thermostat, you're good to go. This is particularly useful, especially when Arcadia recommends using the deep heat projector alongside a halogen. Only having to buy one thermostat makes the prospect much more appealing to some keepers. If you would like to learn what heating product will provide your reptile with the best welfare possible, then take a look at my guide to reptile heating and a free natural way to maintain a natural gradient reduction in nighttime temperatures. 